So we've covered a lot of the things that we can do with JavaScript in the browser, the language, the syntax, interacting with some of the events, adjusting some of the content. But one of the key things that JavaScript is used for nowadays is actually communicating with the server. So at this point, everything we've done when we've sent information to the server has been because of a form or because of a, a direct URL entry. So you can enter a URL and you can, you can include parameters directly on a get URL and that will send some information to the server. But you can also submit a form and that will also send information to the server. But each one of these actions causes a new page to be drawn, a new page to be retrieved, a new page to be rendered. And sometimes we don't want that. Sometimes we just want a little bit of information to be displayed in the page. And one of the ways that we can do this is uh, something called JSON and AJAX. Uh, now, some of this is a little bit, you know, AJAX has a little bit of a weird history. We'll talk a little bit about that, but JSON is a pretty common, normal way to handle this nowadays. So, uh, we'll start off with JavaScript object notation. Now, we've been using this loosely throughout the course when we just define our objects on the fly, uh, but it turns out that it's actually a pretty straightforward way to represent information. So, uh, if we use the curly braces, these, this will actually represent a totally legal JavaScript object that we can define in line. Uh, and we can also embed objects into each other. So we can take an object and put objects into it. It has properties, you know, those properties can be objects. They can also be arrays. And you can see here, we can uh, easily express arrays in, these, in this particular format. So it's kind of a nice format for just our straight JavaScript code, but it's also a pretty useful format for representing information. Um, now, we used to use something called XML to represent information in this way, and XML also works, but it's a little bit more verbose, and there's a little bit more work we have to do to move from uh, XML to our JavaScript objects. So uh, we're going to use JSON because that's just kind of the common way to do this in, in 2022. But uh, why do we use AJAX? Well, the number one reason is we don't always want to refresh the page to load and display data and content. Uh, you know, a lot of times we just want to draw one section of a screen or we want to retrieve one little bit of information. And AJAX allows us to do that. Uh, now, AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. But nowadays, like I said, we typically use JSON for this because it just is easier to communicate back and forth. AJAX also allows us to minimize the size of our requests and responses. If we have to send all of the information to the server every time we need to make a request and we have to draw an entire page every single time we get a response, that's not exactly the best use of bandwidth or our browser's computing capacity. Uh, but if we use AJAX, we can just send some information back to the server and we can just receive some information back that allows us to populate exactly what we need. So something like uh, like a Twitter or a Facebook, uh, those are pages or those are applications that are gonna have a lot of information. And as you scroll, you can use AJAX to populate more and more information or as you open things, you don't necessarily have to redraw the, set of the whole page. You don't have to send all of that information information every request, you can just send the information that you need. Uh, so it also allows us to architect or build or design our applications in ways that uh, allow us to focus on smaller services. So instead of having to build these giant uh, monolithic uh, responses, we can just focus on uh, setting some value or updating something or retrieving some kind of object from our server. And that can allow, uh, you know, us, allow us to be uh, pretty um, directly targeting the, the things that we want to build. You know, they kind of have a single purpose and that makes them a little bit easier to work with, a little bit easier to operate and maintain over time. So this is kind of an older way that you might create an XML HTTP request object, which is the object that we use to control AJAX. Uh, now, later in the term, we'll get into some other ways that you can do this, but uh, right now we'll focus on sort of the programmatic way using uh, the XML HTTP request. So this is a JavaScript object that will handle communication. Think of the XML HTTP request as sort of like a little browser in your browser. It's like a little browser that you can ask to, to submit some information for you and you can retrieve information from it. Uh, so here, this is sort of the older way that you might do this if you had to support older browsers because this will actually work pretty much on every browser back to IE, or IE5. So if you find an old computer, this, you know, this is something that will still operate, you know, even if it's a really, really old uh, version of a browser. But you probably don't need to do all of this nowadays. Nowadays, it's a little bit simpler. You can just do new XML HTTP requests because pretty much every browser that's, uh, that's been created uh, in the last 10 years is gonna operate this particular way. Uh, so you can see 
we're, we're, we're going to abstract this into a function so that, you know, we can change how we actually build this, but it's a pretty straightforward function right now. We're going to try to build the object. And if we can't create the object, then this will be null. So we'll end up with the, you know, just being able to alert the user that the browser doesn't support Ajax. But, uh, I think this should work pretty universally. So you should be in good shape with this particular approach. So we're going to show some helper functions now. We're going to write these. These are not built in. These are things that we can use, but they will allow us to interact with the server much more directly and much more easily. So one of the things that we're probably going to want to do is send some parameters, send some values to the server and get a response from the server. And this post parameters will allow us to do that. So we're going to call this post parameters function uh, and it's going to have uh, an XML HTTP, so this will allow you to, to take some XML HTTP object that you've created, send that to some target URL, and then have a bunch of parameters that you send to that, that particular URL. So this is going to actually be a string of uh, parameters. So open allows us to create this connection or start initiate this connection to the server. Uh, so we're going to send a post request, and that's going to be uh, to the target URL. And then set request header is going to set our content type. Uh, you know, so our content type is just basically we're, we're saying that we're going to send some form parameters to the you know here the application x w w w form and our URL encoded. We're going to send some uh, encoded parameters to the server, and then here we're going to send them. So this will allow us to take an XML HTTP object, a target URL, and a formatted parameter string, and we'll show you how you por uh, format that parameter string. And we're just going to send all of this. So this is sort of one of the things we will need to make an Ajax request actually work. But this is convenience because all now we have to do is take that object, take that URL, and take the information we want to send, and this will handle the sending of it. Now, there's a little bit more that we're going to want to do because we want to respond to that particular uh, that particular request. And this send JSON request will allow us to do this. And now we're going to use a target URL, some parameters, and then a function we want to call back. And we'll talk about callback functions because it's going to be a little bit, you know, sometimes this is hard to get your head around. It's a little bit of a challenge, but uh, the callback function is something that we will call when this is done. We're going to get into some asynchronous approaches to programming, which might be new for some of you. So here we have on ready state change. So we are calling this function. We're going to get our XML HTTP object. We're going to just create that as we would expect uh, using that function we had a few slides ago. We're going to use this on ready state change. So, so far the events we've looked at have been user initiated events, things that the user might click on, things that the user might uh, click out of, uh, mouse events, things like this. But on ready state change is actually going to be a, a communication event. So on ready state change means that we are going to change the communication status for this particular request. And on ready state change, we're going to say that's a function. And the ready state that we care about is for, and we'll, we'll talk about what the ready states are uh, in just a moment. But we are going to, if we get four, this means that the response is ready. And if we have that, we're now going to parse the JSON from this response text. So we're expecting this particular uh, request to return JSON uh, to us. And then when that's done, we're going, that's going to be parsed into an object. So we'll have this object. And then we're going to call that callback function. So in JavaScript, you can use functions as a parameter. So I can declare, I could create a function and I could call it like, process my response. And uh, if I call send JSON request and I po process my response as that third parameter there, then we will call process my response using this callback function. So it will be called with the object that we just parsed from that response. Uh, and we're just going to let the user know the target URL and the parameters that, uh, that, that uh, were used to send this. And the reason we do that is because uh, if we do it this way, then we, we can kind of tell the user uh, the information that was that started this in case the parameters, uh, you know, have any kind of effect on how you process that particular response. Then we're going to call that post parameters function we already defined. So send JSON request. Now all we need is the target URL, uh, a formatted parameter string, and then the function we're going to use to respond. So here you can see we're going to, the yeah, with just a little bit more explanation, that callback function will dynamically call whatever function we pass into send JSON request, this particular parameter callback function. And then, uh, yeah, this will be called. So this is actually a really valuable point to understand. This send JSON request, we are creating the XML HTTP, but then we're just, this on ready state change is an event handler. So it actually doesn't get called until something happens, until the ready state changes. 
So uh, post parameters happens, if you look, think of this logically, uh, we create the object, we define the uh, event handler, and then we send this. So this post parameters happens before any calls to ready state change. So this code will happen later. And this is where we start to get a little bit challenging with JavaScript because uh, we're going to have things that don't necessarily execute line by line like we're used to. That logical uh, approach does not necessarily follow line by line as, as it has in the past. So the ready state property uh, is gonna have one of five values. Um, zero is where we start. That basically means the request isn't initialized and this is the first state that we're gonna encounter. Uh, one, where we have connected to the server. Two, where the, we, have, we know that the request has been received by the server. Three, where the server is processing the request, and then four, where it's completed with processing and given us a response, which is why we really care about ready state for zero, one, two, and three. We can't really do much with it. There are some reasons why you might, you know, like if you wanted to, you know, just log a status that the connection was received, or you wanted to, you know, get a little bit more, uh, if you wanted to explore a little bit more how this is operating, or you wanted to be able to have that sort of debug information for the future, you might want to use these. But typically, the thing you care about is that ready state. Four. So this is kind of the life cycle. Uh, we're going to start off with creating an XML HTTP request. We're going to open a connection. We're going to populate that connection and send it. And then that on ready state that change event handler, that, that, that function that we define in that fun and within the function, it's going to be called for zero, going to be called for one, going to be called for two, going to be called for three, going to be called four. And then in our code, when we get to four, we're going to call that callback function. So there are some ways to handle errors. Uh, you know, one thing that you can do is you can check the status. So if it's a 200 status, everything's okay. And if it's not a 200 status, you might want to report something to the user or, or you know, handle that in a particular way. Uh, you can also use a try catch. So JavaScript does support try catch that looks remarkably similar to the Java approach for try catch. Basically, you have code in your try block, and if an error happens, you get that you execute the catch block. Uh, and that allows you to either output a message that says that something went wrong or you know, potentially try some type of error resolution logic if you want to do that, or maybe just notify the user that something is broken or you know, give them more details about that error. So you can see you know, here we're gonna try to parse this. Maybe it's invalid JSON. Maybe you know, an error happened at the server and we didn't you know, format a response properly, so it's just plain text. Whatever that happens to be, this would actually allow us to handle that error. So there are a couple of ways we can do this, and we'll get into you know, we'll kind of work through some examples to see how this actually operates. Now, the nice thing is that Python has a JSON package that allows us to take primitives, lists, dictionaries, and convert them very easily to JSON objects. So we don't have to go through the process of assembling all of these things on the server. We can use uh, this package to, to create these, and that'll make it much, much simpler for us to operate. So here you can see we're going to automatically create json.dumps, dump string, and that's going to take this list and this object and it's going to be automatically created exactly in javascript syntax as we would like so we don't have to think too hard about that we can just create objects in python and we have this nice package that will translate them for us so in the next uh, two videos we'll get into some examples here we're going to walk through how some of this can work and how we can use it and uh, kind of show it off and explain the details and sometimes that's what you need to be able to make sure that all of this makes sense for you uh, for now, though, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll be right back.